Behind all of the accreditations, profound reputation, carefully crafted masterpieces, and Oscars, of course, Guillermo del Toro is simply a boisterous, charming person whose movies can divide fans between those who think he's a genius and those who feel he's more of a glorified production designer. In our opinion, Guillermo del Toro is one of the few unrivaled filmmakers whose frames represent his craftsmanship. Many of those striking visuals collectively honor the art of storytelling through a visual medium made with sheer joy and accountability. So let's grab this opportunity to honor del Toro's top 10 films ranked from good to best. Gotta go. We all gotta go. It's an emergency, right? Number 10. Blade 2. This follow-up to the 1998 film Blade continues the story of its titular character and focuses on his personal struggle to exonerate his mentor from captivity. The story also focuses on a concurring pandemic that turns humans into voracious blood-craving vampires called Reapers, creatures that reaped well from del Toro's artistic intervention. Although the film isn't the brainchild of del Toro, he still manages to triumph in infusing his narrative prowess and influx of monsters without overshadowing the superhero structure. Much like his severe creature films, Del Toro blindly trusts his carefully imparted formula of prying into the perspective of the monsters. Nevertheless, Blade 2 is one hell of an action film, stuffed with enough blazing guns, franchise motifs, and trademark blades that it's almost impossible to resist. Number 9. Hellboy Del Toro's first official international blockbuster was an esoteric tale of demons from hell. Del Toro succeeds in establishing an emotionally tangible side to a demon with sharply pruned horns. So if you really care about me, you won't come back. Underneath the formidable figure, indestructible doom, fire-resistant body, and bestial horns, Hellboy is a bunny in a beast's clothing. With Hellboy, del Toro excels in every department by flaunting exceptional craftsmanship and rendering fewer CGI interventions with the help of renowned veteran Ron Perlman, who dons the demon suit and makeup. The film's intentions are clear, to combine mythical anecdotes with cinematic liberations and the passion needed by a filmmaker to persuade the audience to accept a demon as one of their own. Number 8. Kronos Kronos is a clear demonstration of what del Toro aspires to do as a filmmaker. He creates a visually marvelous fantasy world while generating empathy for feared creatures. In Kronos, he accomplishes just that by cajoling viewers into rooting for a blood-sucking vampire. It's an inventive take on human desperation that spreads rampantly. Del Toro loves to test his protagonists by placing them in a pick-one-pill situation where the decision glorifies the horror they eventually partake in. Henceforth, the course the protagonist ultimately follows is defined by the decisions he makes. Even though the film only caters to del Toro's long-loving fans, it does well to convey his competency as a storyteller. That fucker does nothing but shit and piss all day and he wants to live longer? Déjeme en paz. Haga lo que tenga que hacer, pero déjeme en paz. Number 7. Hellboy 2 – The Golden Army Released four years after the success of its prequel, Hellboy 2 is more than just a successful rendition of a well-received demon story. It's a silver lining to the filmography of del Toro. This is a franchise that was always supposed to be with the big red guy front and center and a more colorful cast surrounding him. It fully indulges del Toro's love of big weird monsters without losing any of the humor of the first movie. Oh, no. I wouldn't do that if I were you. <laughs> Fundamentally, Hellboy is an inhabitant of a dark world, but the film blooms when the story veers into the sanguine perspective of Hellboy's adopted father. He nurtures the demon with love, thus keeping the bad on the good side. With the Golden Army, del Toro aces the effective usage of CGI. It's a richer, more thoughtful film that never loses sight of its terrific characters. God. To set us free. All of us, Father. Number 6. The Devil's Backbone The Devil's Backbone is a film that harbors a filmmaker's artistic expression at its peak. Not every paranormal entity is a menace. Some are just lost souls struggling to find a way out of the darkness. 
The film sets in motion through an intimidating prologue where an inert missile sits dormant in the courtyard of a secluded orphanage. The film focuses on the new inmate, Carlos, who is captivated by the sitting missile and chronicles his life as he tries to adapt to the near dilapidated paranormal orphanage. With the devil's backbone, Del Toro contrives to unveil the dark, lurking identities of people, places, and things one at a time. The film is a reticent spell on revealing the psychological toll an ongoing war can have on people. It's a masterpiece that questions the evolution of human behavior with a menacing premise and a tragic conclusion. Number 5. Pacific Rim Pacific Rim is a pictorial prophecy of the future by an artist's cathartic eye. When monstrous creatures known as kaiju start rising from the sea, a war begins that takes millions of lives and consumes humanity's resources for years on end. To combat the giant kaiju, a special type of weapon is devised, massive robots called Jaegers. The film sympathizes with the ordeal endured by humans from the subsequent advent of kaijus through the interdimensional portal underneath the earth which is a product of their own making. Pacific Rim may not be an ambitious allegory, but it's the epitome of a Hollywood blockbuster that's led by the emerging Charlie Hunnam, Idris Elba, and Rinko Kikochi. Through Pacific Rim, Del Toro tries to be callous of the film's moral principles, but makes sure to deliver what he aspired to as a lover of fictional stories. Talk. Engaged. Number 4. Crimson Peak Crimson Peak is Del Toro exercising to unlearn things to find his artistic voice. It operates as an augmented visual story that harbors dark, licentious emotions dotted with giant, immersive metaphors. Films helmed by visually fortified auteurs seldom rely on the unique performances of actors, but here Jessica Chastain's intrusive portrayal as Lucille, the devil in human clothing, elevates the film as a whole. So you better soothe that boundless imagination of yours. I just need a proper welcome, that's all. From now on, I want this house to contain nothing but friendship and love and warmth. She plays the big sister of a gallant, attractive, and alarmingly opaque Tom Hiddleston, who magically lures an impressionable writer into marrying him. Crimson Peak primarily focuses on the travesty of a newlywed bride isolated in an enigmatic house and a hostile husband's sister colluding to get her out of the picture. The film once again ascertains the intentions of ghosts being good, just like in Del Toro's previous films where the demon is not the devil. Crimson Peak relies heavily on visually appealing frames in a world filled with crimson themes, fog, fear, and romance. It stands out as one of Del Toro's most pristine creations. <laughs> Number 3. The Shape of Water the Shape of Water is the story of a woman's intimate relationship with solitude and an amphibian creature from the Amazon who's at the mercy of human scientists. Opening in the poised environment of its protagonist's apartment, Del Toro alters the vantage point of his audience from the magnificent creature played by Doug Jones to the reclusive Eliza, a self-contented mute woman with contagiously brewing empathy. On the one hand, the film stays incoherent in substantiating its enchanting premise, while also staying tenacious in its portrayal of the symbiotic relationship between man and nature. In The Shape of Water, it's not just the amphibian creature who is suffering. It's the protagonist and the humans who empathize with him who have been victimized by a hazardous world and are just as desperate to find solace and alleviate their pain. With this Academy Award-winning film, Del Toro unveils the sordid nature of humanity and how the traits we inherit will decide which side we are on. <laughs> Number 2. Pan's Labyrinth Every film by Del Toro is a metaphor for the horrors of the world his films are set in, but Pan's Labyrinth works doubly as the director's attempt to pay homage to the stories we're told as kids. The story focuses on an 11-year-old girl named Ophelia, who joins her cruel stepfather and her pregnant mother at his home. Moments after her arrival, she finds an enigmatic arcade engraved with mythical creatures leading into a labyrinth. The film is a work of art. Be it the top-grade CGI effects, the social milieu of the world the film is set in, 
a plethora of levitating fairies, colossal creatures reminiscent of bedtime anecdotes, and most importantly, the darkness of fascism. Regarded as the bedazzling sapphire amongst del Toro's filmography of crown jewels, this Spanish masterpiece is what turned the heads of film audiences and Hollywood studio executives across the world towards the craftsmanship of one Guillermo del Toro. Number 1. Nightmare Alley Del Toro's most ambitious and star-studded film, Nightmare Alley is embellished with an ensemble of renowned thespians like Bradley Cooper, Rooney Mara, Tony Collette, Kate Blanchett, and Willem Dafoe. The film is a redemption of the neo-noir genre that takes its audience through a psychological ride into the abyss of the protagonist's capricious head, where he becomes the victim of his own sly doings, leaving nothing but the debris of self-conceit. Each character in the film is destined to create an impetus for the narrative. Nothing is reliable or trustworthy. It serves as a subtle depiction of del Toro's diegetic invocations, horror motifs, and stylistic hallmarks with one of the most epiphanic climaxes in recent times. Not many filmmakers desire to inflict their protagonist with their best weapon. Shut up. But Del Toro makes sure to swing the hardest and most ruthless whip that shatters his viewers' expectations while staying relevant to the film's fundamental theme of mysticism and deception. I was bored for it. So, those were our picks for Guillermo del Toro's top 10 movies. Do you agree with our ranking? What's your favorite Guillermo del Toro film? Let us know in the comments down below.